Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to take you through different Azure services in storage, network and compute. In Azure storage, we have blobs. Azure blob storage is a service that provides the ability to store unstructured data into cloud as objects and blobs. Basically, if you want to store media files, documents or any unstructured data, then you will be able to store the same in Azure using blob storage. This is more like a OneDrive or Dropbox, but it has a lot of capabilities in terms of ability to create blobs, upload blobs, and the ability to read the content of the blob, etc. And using different Azure services, you'll be able to access this blob and process the information. And the next one is file. Azure file storage is a service that offers shared file storage in the cloud using standard server message block protocol. As you can imagine, there are many legacy applications with shared file storage. Basically, you might have three, four application servers sharing the same file storage in order to place the documents or read the documents, etc. For that backward compatibility purposes, Microsoft provided file storage using which you can able to create file shares quickly and without having to change the applications. And the next one is queue. Azure queue storage provides cloud messaging between application components. It enables application decoupling and asynchronous communication of messages. If you understand the queue concept, it is very similar to on-premise queue, where you have an application generating the messages at a faster rate than the consuming application. Then you can have a queue in between. The message generating application will put the messages into the queue. And based on number of messages into the queue, you can able to spin off more compute capacity for the consuming application to process those messages. And the next thing is tables. Azure's table storage enables you to store structured NoSQL data in the cloud. It is a key attribute store with a schema-less design. And table storage offer much cheaper storage than traditional SQL. Let's say, for example, if you have a requirement to store all the postcodes in your country with their associated longitude and latitude. You don't need to build any relations for this table. In that case, you can put that postcode table with millions of records in Azure table storage and read the rows of that table programmatically. We have dedicated lectures on each of these Azure storage services and also we have labs on these things on how to create them, how to access them programmatically. And Data Lake Store. Azure Data Lake Store is a hyperscale repository for big data analytic workloads. It is built for large scale analytics systems that require massive throughput to query and analyze large amounts of data. Bear in mind, Data Lake Store is specifically designed for big data analytics. You can store massive amount of data in terabytes in Data Lake Store and you can use Data Lake Analytics or Hadoop to carry out analytics on the data. When compared to blob table queues, Data Lake Store is a bit more costly because the throughput and the efficiency you get with the Data Lake Store is far better than compared to Azure blob tables, queues and files. Then we have Store Simple. Store Simple addresses massive data growth by taking the advantage of economical cloud storage for inactive data. So it's actually offered by a third party company, but Microsoft acquired it and is offering as a one of the Azure services. It is a very effective solution to automatically archive your inactive data into the cloud, thereby providing an efficient, cost effective backup solution. And backup Azure Backup can be used to backup and restore your data in the cloud. You can schedule a solution in such a way. Your virtual machines will be backed up continuously on a scheduled basis and the backed up images will be stored in the cloud and you can restore whenever you have a problem with your virtual machine. And the next thing is site recovery. Azure site recovery orchestrates replication of workloads running on premises, physical servers and virtual machines from primary data center to the cloud or to a secondary data center. I find this is extremely useful and saves a lot of cost because most of the companies have primary data center and a diaster recovery data center. Whenever the primary data center is down, 
they move the workloads to disaster recovery data center however rarely the primary data center goes down so it is very unlikely you will see a primary data center going down however you can't avoid having a dr data center because you have to have it because you never know what's going to happen to your primary but maintaining that dr data center is a very costly affair so to avoid the dr data center what you can do is you can use site recovery to replicate that workload into the cloud and spin off the virtual machines in the cloud whenever your primary data center gone down in that way you might be paying a small cost for azure storage to store the images and everything but you are saving a lot of time effort and cost in terms of maintaining a dr data center i hope you understand the advantage of site recovery and finally we have azure import and export which i haven't discussed in our earlier lecture when you are moving to the cloud most of your customer might have large amount of data and if you want to migrate to the cloud over internet particularly when you have terabytes of data it might take lot of time to help you in that situations microsoft provided a service called import and export where you can ship your hard disk to an azure data center and they will load the data directly into their data center so these are the azure storage services that are available there are many more but these are the key services and we have a dedicated section in this course where i'm going to take you through in detail and we have some hands on exercises also and the next one is azure network in azure network we have virtual network azure virtual network is a representation of customer own network in the cloud where you can define your own ip address range your own security policies you can create subnets you can define root tables and all those stuff although the underlying infrastructure is shared between different customers when you create a virtual network it creates your own logical private space so nobody will be able to access the services residing on that particular virtual network space and the next one is load balancer azure load balancer is a layer 4 load balancer that distributes the incoming traffic among the healthy instances of the services defined in the load balancer set and the load balancer can be external internet facing load balancer or internal load balancer we have a dedicated lecture in the course where i am going to show you how to create a load balancer how to distribute the load between two virtual machines using load balancer and also i will show you how to define health checks also so load balancer will check the health of those two vms if you bring down one vm then i'm going to show you how load balancer will automatically route the traffic to the healthy instance and application gateway application gateway does the same job of load balancer but it has a lot more capabilities it provide layer 7 load balancing capabilities it accepts the traffic and based on the rules that are defined with it it routes the traffic to appropriate backend instances there are some key differences between application gateway and load balancer because load balancer sits outside your virtual network whereas application gateway sits on your virtual network again i don't want to go into detail now because it might be confusing for you we have dedicated lectures on each one of them where i'm going to take you through anyway and traffic manager azure traffic manager allows you to control distribution of user traffic for service and points in different data centers so you really need to understand the difference between traffic manager application gateway and load balancer traffic manager works at a dns level to route the traffic to different data centers based on the data center availability and all those stuff once the traffic reaches the data center then the load balancer will come into picture and distributes the traffic once the traffic left the load balancer then you can have application gateway again so there are different azure services that you can use to deliver a very high availability solution if you are taking any of the microsoft certification exams it is really important for you to understand the difference between traffic manager application gateway and load balancer and we have express route using express route you can extend your on premises network into the cloud over a dedicated private connection facilitated by connection provider 
express route connections do not go over public internet so if you want to build a hybrid cloud i.e if you want to have your on-premise data center connected to the azure data center and have mission critical applications on premise and non mission critical applications on the cloud then you can use express route to establish that connection generally there are many third party providers who has data centers that have direct connectivity with microsoft data center so what you do is you will connect your data center to this third party data center which in turn get connected to microsoft data center you can have a direct connection also but that is generally used for government organizations not private companies because you will not be able to afford that and then vpn gateway it is used to send network traffic between azure virtual networks and on premises locations and also between virtual networks within azure that is vnet to vnet when you compare express route with vpn gateway express route uses a private connection to connect two data centers whereas using vpn gateway you will connect your on premise data center to the cloud over internet so obviously vpn gateway is much cheaper when compared to express route and finally dns azure dns is a hosting service for dns domains providing name resolution using microsoft azure infrastructure Azure DNS does not currently support purchasing of domain names. They might introduce you very soon, but at this moment of time when I'm making this video, Azure DNS does not currently support purchasing of domain names. So these are the network related Azure service offerings. We have dedicated lectures on each one of them where I'm going to take you through in detail and we have quite a few hands-on exercises on how to create a virtual network how to create subnet network security groups and also how to deliver a high availability solution using load balancer etc and finally azure compute services in azure compute services we have virtual machines this is a very basic one azure virtual machine lets you create and use virtual machines on the cloud it is basically infrastructure as a service one thing you need to remember when it comes to infrastructure as a service is you need to maintain the virtual machine so the configuration patching and maintaining the software that runs on the virtual machine is your responsibility using azure virtual machines you can create windows you can create linux virtual machines also and the next one is cloud service i believe microsoft is going to discontinue this cloud service so by the time you are taking this course it might not be available but as it stands now it is offered as a platform as a service where management of the platform it runs will be handled by microsoft so you don't need to worry about patching or configuring and also you can install your own software and you can remote into cloud service vm one difference between cloud service and virtual machine is cloud service is tightly coupled with application i.e you will not be able to create the infrastructure as a standalone you always create coupled together with an application we have a dedicated lecture on this where i'm going to explain what it exactly means and the next one is service fabric service fabric is a distributed system platform that makes it easy to package deploy and manage scalable and reliable microservices these days there are a lot of applications that are being developed on microservices framework basically a single application is divided into number of individually executable and packageable microservices and deployed on a cluster of virtual machines but are connected through microservices framework again we have a dedicated lecture on this where i'm going to take you through what service fabric exactly mean what are the concepts related to microservices etc and the next thing is batch Azure Batch enables you to run large scale parallel and high performance computing applications efficiently in the cloud. You can run on demand or schedule job without manually creating the required setup. For example, you have 10000 employees on a monthly basis you want to run the payroll. You can able to schedule an Azure Batch, provide the necessary information, define the logic in jobs and run the payroll. So the beauty is you are paying only for that one day of payroll processing for the underlying servers and computing capacity for the other 28 days you don't need to pay anything if you having that payroll 
within your data center you need to maintain that infrastructure all the time so that's the difference and the next thing is functions functions is a very cool concept it is based on a serverless architecture you can able to write small pieces of the code and run the same on the cloud without worrying about whole infrastructure or application runs it microsoft will take care of that for you you will only pay for the time your code runs and you can leave the scaling to azure don't worry if you don't understand it just think of azure function as a small piece of code which contains a logic and you can deploy that piece of logic on azure and using http functions you can call that function provide the content in the request and get the output as a response so you don't need to worry about hosting the underlying infrastructure where it runs and all those stuff we have a dedicated lecture and a hands on exercise on how to develop a function using visual studio how to deploy it etc these functions are mainly used in integration with different azure services so for example an xml file has been placed into a blob you can configure in such a way a function will get triggered immediately whenever a file is placed in azure storage and in the azure function you can process the content of the file and do something with it or populate into a sql database so there are lots of usages for azure functions which i'm going to explain in its own dedicated lecture and finally virtual machine scale sets virtual machine scale sets are an azure compute resource that you can use to deploy and manage a set of identical vms if you want to provision tens of web servers at the same time with the same configuration then you can use virtual machine scale sets one additional advantage with virtual machine scale sets is for example if you have 10 web servers and you want to reduce the number of web servers during the night time but increase the number of servers by 8 o'clock in the morning then you can use virtual machine scale set auto scaling to do the same thereby you can reduce the cost of your compute capacity drastically we have a lecture and hands on exercise in this course about how to create a virtual machine scale set and how to enable auto scaling based on cpu utilization if the cpu utilization of your servers goes beyond 80% then you can spin off additional virtual machines and if the cpu utilization comes down below 20% then the number of virtual machines will get reduced i have shown that to you in one of the hands on exercises in azure compute section of the course so in this lecture we have went through azure storage services we have went through azure network services and also we have went through azure compute services see you in the next lecture of the course